anytime there's such like a freak out crazy reaction like this, it's either because they're trying to save face for whatever reason, or there's. Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard and we're going to be talking about Matt Chandler. Pastor Matt coming up next. All right. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Uh, those who don't know, I've been on vacation, Sabbath, fast, whatever you want to call it. Probably a fast is probably the best way to call it. Uh, for all of August and a couple of days in July, just kind of starting off. And it's been good. It was good. Uh, last night I did a live. Uh, I'll do Ask Me Anything. I know that's become a little more popular these days. Uh, I've done a handful of those. I don't do them that often, but it was very uh, beneficial, helpful. So it's there. Uh, it's the most one of the most recent videos after this one or before this one. And check that out. I'm going to put the little chapters in there of the questions, hopefully today or tomorrow. And uh, so you can look for that a little bit easier to search. I'm a, a husband and a father. I'm a pastor, uh, a small church here in Kentucky, and originally from California, uh, but lived in Kentucky for almost nine years now. And it's great. If you're looking for a state to relocate to, Kentucky's Kentucky's a good one. Uh, lower taxes and and less traffic and housing prices are great. And really, when we have all the same stores, uh, and it's kind of like Midwest, but it's also kind of the South. It's kind of this like weird kind of middle ground state. And so you get a lot of pros and there's a lot of pros and cons, but I think there's a lot more pros ultimately. No mountains though. And I, I don't care what the Kentuckians say about the Eastern mountains. There's no mountains, but I digress. Matt Chandler is a pastor, SBC pastor in Texas, very uh, popular pastor. And you probably know who he is. And if you don't, you'll see his picture in a moment here, but He's part of the Together for the Gospel. You know, he, he he's famous for his hand preaching, and I use my hands, so I'm not necessarily insulting him on that. Uh, but he's never went to seminary, so kind of brags about that. And um, married, has kids. I've met him a couple times, just like in passing, not like any had real conversations with him. Uh, but he seems like a nice guy. He, he had cancer uh, several years ago, and battled through that. I actually lost his hair. I think it was 2014, 2015, something like that. And recently fired, stepped down, not fired, stepped down, suspended. So we're going to look at this here and see what, what exactly is going on. Popular evangelical pastor abruptly leaves. This is who he is here. You can see him there. Uh, no beard, you know, right? Short brown hair. He's in his like late forties now, but he's been a pastor for a while, like I think fifteen years, maybe more. Um, so the pastor of a Texas church was placed on leave of absence on Sunday, telling his congregation that he messaged a woman who was not his wife in a way that was unguarded and unwise. All right, first of all, that's a little weird. And so, goes on, Chandler, head of Village Church in Dallas, the big church, thousands of people, stated the message were not romantic or sexual, but the church's elders decided that he did not use language appropriate for a pastor and did not model behavior that was exempt, expect of him. Chandler 48, scroll down a little bit. While Matt Chandler messages took place in full knowledge of both his wife and the woman's, his and woman's spouses, his wife, her husband, I guess, Church hired an outside firm to audit Chandler's online activity. So second point, like that's, I don't know. I feel like that's too much. <laughs> now I understand Matt Chandler's not me or your pastor and likely. And so uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, he's a celebrity pastor, for lack of a better word. No, he's convictional, and I disagree with him on some stuff, and he said some dumb, wokey, woke things in the last couple of years. But, I mean, I don't I don't have any doubt that the guy loves Jesus. I don't, I don't have any doubt that he's uh, trying to be convictional and use his convictions and minister in a way that's good. Like, he doesn't wear a suit and tie or even, you know, a coat. He's like a t-shirt and, you know, hoodie, and, you know, he's very cool, and he does this whole thing, and... um. 
And he's got good illustrations and he really gets to people, right? In, in a good way. Attorney? Outside attorneys? Like, really? Like, okay. Church leader stated the channel had failed to meet biblical standards by being above reproach with following investigation. Okay. So that's good. We're using the Bible, right? We want to use the Bible. Good. Village church hired uh, Castalleda. That's a little end there with a tilde as a yes. So Castalleda and Heidelman Law Firm to conduct the investigation. Church was declined to release a copy. That will spend time during the leave. Pulpit focus on development with the elders and guided by outside counselors. So this is a pretty short article. Uh, this one's a little bit longer. Global Church Planting Network, Acts 29. So this is Acts 29. Um, so he's the pastor of Village Church. And Acts 29 is the church planting network that was started or helped start by Mark Driscoll 20 years ago. So there's Acts, you know, there's eight, 28 chapters in Acts. So this is the next chapter. And it's a good name and all that. And, you know, they've done some good work. But anyway. X-29 prioritizes personal integrity, holds leaders to a high standard of conduct concerning the findings of the TVC investigation consistent with leave of absence from preaching, teaching. X-29 asked him to step aside from X-29 speaking engagements during this time. During this period, he is exempt from going to his job obligation employees. Further notice, he cannot do less than four months or more than five years. Village Church elders in a statement Sunday <clears throat> said that Chandler was voluntarily disclosed the inappropriate Instagram messages between himself and an unidentified woman after a friend and a woman confronted him about his behavior. Put that in your back pocket. Chandler, who said he wasn't aware of the time he'd done anything wrong, said he alerted Josh Patterson, elder leadership, addressing the situation. He also informed his wife. I don't think I'd done anything wrong in that. I didn't think I had done anything wrong. Chandler explained he faced his congregation. His wife knew that her woman's her, the woman's husband knew that. And yet there was a couple things that she said were disorienting to me. Goes on a little bit more, a little more detail here. It is Rachel Den Hollander, advocate of sexual abuse victims and pushed for increased transparency with the SBC, told New York Times the Village Church did itself no favors by not taking the report public. It always best practice to release the result of independent assessment. It is best protection for everybody. All right, so Rachel Den Hollander, she's a pretty polarizing figure, at least at these, these junctures in uh, the church and society. If you don't know who she is, that's okay. Uh, she's a lawyer and she also, she was on a gymnastics team several years back when she was a youth and she was basically, uh, molested and, and assaulted and things by the coach and he got put in prison and he did this a bunch of times. This was go so great. You know, justice is served. Excellent. Uh, but now she's an advocate, which is, you know, these are worldly terms <laughs> to a degree and, you know, we capture them or we try and take them back. Uh, and it doesn't always work. Now, advocate is just a general word, but when you say someone now is an advocate or an ally, that means they're now for the rainbow alphabet soup mafia. And that's not that's not what she is, but it's it's confusing, especially with someone who's reading it for the first time. So this isn't about her, but she's talking about sexual assault, though. And this is she's for victims of sexual assault. And this woman didn't approach Matt Chandler. But at the end of the day, this man, this pastor, is, and he, his wife knows it. They're not sexual, right? They're not abusive. So I don't know why they have Rachel Den Hollander, an abuse advocate, talking about it. My hunch is that there's more to this story. That's my hunch. Especially since he's, it's so, anytime there's such like a freak out crazy reaction like this, it's either because they're trying to save face for whatever reason, or there's more going on. And we uh, we need to bury this quick. Well, we did everything we could, you know, especially something like this. So I'm not a prophet, son of a prophet. You know the phrase. But I think there's more going on here. I think there's more going on. But right now, it's just a few Instagram messages with Matt, Matt Chandler and, and a woman that were inappropriate and not above reproach. Okay, well, we're going to look at the Bible here in a moment. 
um, both that verse and another. But what's problematic, and this is the second verse relating, this woman isn't the woman who comes up, the one who's talking, but rather her friend. And all of a sudden, you know, believe all women or something. Now, they can obviously see the text messages, right? They can see the things more easily as opposed to like, hey, we were at this cafe six months ago and you came in and blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, are there video cameras? No. You know, well, do you have your phone? No, I left my phone at home. Do you have like a tracking thing on like a, a location? No. You know, does any does anybody know that you were there? No. You know, so it's just like this believe all women thing as if women don't sin, right? Because uh, newsflash, they do <laughs> just like men do. Right? But as soon as I say that, even some people are like, oh, uh, you're such a sexist. And it's like, that's ridiculous. But point is, this isn't sexual. It says it's not sexual. Now, is it, was it actually sexual? Well, I think Tom will tell. Um, but why Rachel Denhollander is even cited other than she was in the SBC and has been with Russell Moore and been on panels and talked about stuff in the last few years and been a, been a uh, church Me Too advocate. Um which again, that doesn't diminish abuse. We need to remove ourselves from it and think, listen, it's not the either or, right? It's not the pendulum over here or over here, okay? Sometimes it's a both and. Sometimes it's, well, this is partially correct. This is partially wrong. Uh, to say that, you know, women sin doesn't mean men don't. Or to say we should believe all women, well, that's first of all wrong because women also lie. Do we not know that? And so, but that doesn't mean all men tell the truth and men don't lie. Right. But even saying those things, like there's a like, part of me and I've never been a feminist, even in my unbelieving days, but like there's part of me that's still like, oh, that's kind of like insensitive. And it's like, how is that insensitive? Like, it's just reality. Right. And as Christians, we worship the God of reality. Right. That's why we worship Christ. That's why I, uh, I, I walk with Christ, because he's the God who not only upholds all things, but he's also the man, the God man who's close. Right, And he sees my sin and he loves me anyway. He died for my sin and he died for your sin. right? And so this is the difference that the world doesn't have. And so often, especially in the SBC, and I see it all the time, and all these big wigs and the elites, they're, they act like the world. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, you're not acting like a believer in Christ at all. You're acting like the world. 1 Timothy 5.19, do not entertain an accusation against an elder unless it is brought by two or three witnesses, NIV. Those of us who are like the ESV, do not admit a charge against an elder except for two or three witnesses. King James, for those KJVers out there, against an elder, receive not an accusation but two or three witnesses. i got to talk about Bible translation here another time. Oh, you can't use the new translations. They're modern and terrible, blah, blah, blah. Well, what's the point? They just use synonyms, but what's the thrust of the argument? Don't listen to someone against an elder, an overseer, a, a, a man who's in the church body, an accusation against him, unless there's at least two or three people. Well, are there two or three people here? No. Now, maybe they're counting the wife or, or, or other people, or they can look, you know, now we've got these little digital devices, right? And so anybody can see it. But if he didn't think he did anything wrong at the time, and I don't think Matt Chandler's an idiot. I think he's probably pretty smart. And, you know, again, he said some dumb stuff lately uh, in the last few years and um, borderline racist things when trying not to be racist, of course. And but are there two or three witnesses here or the woman approached him? And it's not just the woman, but another woman, her friend approached him in the lobby. Like, I, I just I don't know. An overseer then must be above reproach, husband of one wife, temperate. And let's look at that a little bit more closely because that's what's here. Three, two, classic uh, Bible verse for elder overseers, clearly prohibits women and a lot of men, right? Mark this, by the way. Mark this clearly. Well, I can't be a pastor. I'm called to preach. No, ma'am, you're not. You're not. It's your own flesh because God said so. And since God and God has in his word said so, you're not called to preach. I don't know what you're feeling or thinking, but you're not called to preach. But you know what else? A lot of other men aren't called to preach either, right? They're terrified to talk to people, for example, or their life is a wreck, or they can't control their children, or they're not the husband of one wife. They're not temperate. They're drunkards. 
They're addicted to alcohol. They're addicted to substances. Right? Like, so this bars a lot of people, including a lot of men. Right? So just, let's just keep that in mind. The saying is trust, trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, the desire, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach. A husband of one wife. And so this above reproach is kind of that umbrella and these things are underneath it. At least that's how it's appeared. I'm not a Greek scholar, but that's how it is in the English. And if you just read it naturally, that's what it seems to be. A husband and one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, right? It's not just able to teach, number one, or able to preach even. Teaching and preaching are different. Not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well with all dignity, keeping children submissive. For if anyone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he take care of the church of God? He must not be a recent convert, or many become puffed up and conceit and fall away in condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders, so that he may not fall into disgrace or a snare of the devil. So, these umbrella things, though, like, where where is this being broken? Where is Matt Chandler above reproach? Where is he not above reproach? Is he now not the husband of one wife? Is he not sober-minded? Maybe self-controlled or ho- respectable? Hospitable? Okay. I mean, he's not definitely not a drunkard with a text message or text, you know, stream messages, whatever, messenger thing. Not quarrelsome, maybe he's quarrelsome. It's not talking about money, managing his own household, keeping his dignity. So, I mean, you know, there's one or two things, maybe three in here that like, well, yeah, he fell there. He fell. But the fact that we have sex abuse advocates and well, they should have disclosed these things, you know, as she stands there with her finger. And it's like, but they did though, didn't they? We're reading about it on, you know, Fox News and Christian Post and other places. Uh, and you're suspended for four months. Could be five years, though. Could be five years. We'll see. Like, and not just his church, but of course, Acts 29. I hope it's not a Ravi Zacharias type of thing. I really do. Um, I don't know. Time will tell. I'm not going to prophesy one way or the other, but it's not good. So anyway, so time will tell. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I hope uh, we can pray for him. Uh, we can pray that he sees his nonsense with with this, but also the church too. Um, I, they're not doing a good job, I don't think, with the two or three elders, uh, witnesses to the elder. So that's what's frustrating. Say, well, you're being a, you're being a, a biblical, but then you're not, right? Anyway, uh, a couple things. I will be doing a new channel for Contra Talk. Those are the long form talk shows where I have a guest on and we talk about a certain topic. So look out for that. I haven't started the channel yet, but I have some ideas about the youtube algorithm and theories that i'm going to try and test out but i encourage everybody to go there because that's where all those shows are now going to be i still have some here uh many here but i'm going to put all the new ones and the old ones on that channel to separate it out a little bit it's more of a podcast this i guess is a podcast i don't know i'm just talking to a camera and there's video and audio and hopefully you're watching and enjoying and if you haven't uh subscribe please subscribe i'm trying to get past that thousand you know, that little mark there, uh, it's a it's a pretty big milestone for YouTube, would be for me. Uh, it would give me warm fuzzies inside. And yeah, so like this video, comment if you would, I appreciate it. Uh, it really does, it, it just tangibly helps the algorithm. You know, it tells YouTube, hey, these people like this content, I'm going to tell it to other people. I do also have a new website, richardthenry.com, where you can find me from other people's channels, you can read my blog that I just started uh, right there a few times a week. And then, of course, this channel and all my social media stuff is all kind of siphoned there. So anyway, you saw it at the beginning. If you want to support me financially, which would be a blessing because uh, times are hard, but I know they're hard for everybody. Uh, you can go to uh, buymeacup, buymeacoffee.com slash Richard T. Henry, buymeacoffee.com. It's like Patreon. I'll put the link in the description. It's down there as well. So if you want to, hey, great work. Here's 10 bucks. Here's five bucks. And the whole buy me coffees is as, is, is as if we went to coffee, right? And you're like, oh, no, I got it. I got your latte. I got your black coffee. Anyway, I'd appreciate that. I know a lot of people are like, oh, how can I support you? I want to do this or that. 
it's better than just like, you know, sending me cash in the mail or something. Although I guess that's good. <laughs> anyway, y'all have a great day. Channel point here. My point here is to help you and encourage you to be contramundum, but pro mundo. So against the world, but for the world. To, to pick up something, to look at it, examine it, and all through the lens of the word of God, to, to be against these things, but for them, right? I'm, a, I'm against these even accusations in the sense that this didn't seem to go right. There seems to be pieces missing. Uh, what's really going on? There seems to be more to the story, and yet I'm for it because I don't want Matt Chandler to fall. I want Rachel Den Hollander to help real abuse victims, but is this woman a real abuse victim, or are we just having a whole another you know, charade that's not true. I don't know. I hope the truth will come out once again. And I hope Matt is restored and will continue to proclaim the gospel to people, to, to sinners and redeemed sinners. So y'all take care. Be against the world for the world. All right.